Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 210 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is Tuesday, September the 27th, 2011, and it's great to have you here. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Christy Merton. How are you? <laughs> oh, I missed you. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and we missed you at the 200th episode. I, I hear know. There was a, a bit of a, a, a little issue that... Injury. Uh, a hiccup. And I didn't do it. I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't smash his finger with a hammer. I really When didn't. I heard John, it hurt his... <laughs> his uh, his hand with a hammer. I, w- I was wondering, you know, there there are easier ways to to avoid coming on out, you know, <laughs> and less painful well, ways. He lost the draw. He got the short straw. <laughs> Healing up well though and doing well. Yeah. Oh, he's uh, he's humming and hawing. Oh, he's all right. Nice to see you. He's, no incidents you. today. You stayed away from home improvement projects today. We, yeah, it, we discussed it, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-show jitters. Well, do you want to do it instead? <laughs> but you said no. Lots of exciting stuff coming up tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. I know you've got some exciting news stories. I do. And it's great to have you back in the newsroom, of course. Oh, thank you. With all your news experience. So that's going to be awesome. Also, uh, and, and the weather reports, too. That's they've it's already so started great to bring people. the weather reports it's back. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, speaking of weather reports, and, and for those who don't understand what that is, is referring to, when Christy was here many moons ago, Easy. Our way, well, her way of telling us, you know, where viewers were from was to say, okay, well, what's the weather where you are? And so people would send in their reports. But, Christy, there's, there's a new way that we can do this. We can actually see the viewers that are watching Category 5. Wow, I love it. Look at that. That is incredible. So, based upon that, we, uh, we, we don't even know, need to know what, uh, what the weather forecast looks like. Well, okay, so we, we won't mention that it's 20 to 23 Celsius in the Netherlands, and, and we it won't precisely. mention, um, you know, about what Scorpio said about it being 27 in the UK. Of course, that's about 85 Fahrenheit. And uh, in Clifton, New Jersey, can you imagine 73? Ah. Oh. So, um, I don't even yeah, know what so that we, means. we won't, um, so don't send in your weather reports, and, <laughs> and, and don't talk about the weather. Thank you. Tonight. We're going to be looking at a free online photo editor that's very, very cool. Uh, we're going to be checking it out. Run that right I'm very, in your browser. I'm very interested in. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm back doing photojournalism again. Really? So I'm, yeah. Well, that's cool. Here's so something for you. Oh, yeah. It's going to let you work from any computer, any browser, any platform, and you're going to be able to edit your photos right there. Okay, see, cool this is the place where you find out everything you need to know. And a uh, common uh, issue on Linux is uh, detecting your hardware, figuring out, you know, well, what, what command do I run in the terminal to figure out what hardware I've got? Uh, I always wonder that. Well, mm. it's a common question. So I've got a, a GUI application we're going to be looking at tonight. Awesome. Cool. What do you got coming up in the newsroom? Oh, we have lots of interesting news that we're about to talk about. Well, about the halfway point through the show, we're going to talk about a uh, hack against Canada's government, and that continues to leave workers with limited internet. And Microsoft's latest lawsuits targets Casio's use of Linux. Hmm. Google Plus is open for public consumption. And NASA's UARS, or as Robbie calls it, UARS satellite re entered, but NASA doesn't know where or exactly when. Dun, dun, dun. Now you know why I call it UARS. Yeah. A hidden Goya portrait has been found using sophisticated art X ray technology and fears Neat. that Linux won't work on a Windows 8 certified PC are somewhat unwarranted. So stick around, these stories are coming up in about 20 minutes. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Dave Maydu jo- <laughs> joins us tonight from Dudley in the West Midlands Neat. and submitted a picture of uh, him using his device to watch Category 5. Neat. Now, he's really excited. Uh, was mentioned that he's, he's uh, expecting to be getting a 20-inch device that he's going to be able to watch the show on. So definitely yeah. bigger than the one that he's using. 
So, nice. Very cool stuff. Good job, Dave. 100 viewer points for you. Oh, and, <laughs> and it looks like uh, the conversation has been sparked. <laughs> this one comes to us from Lalonde, uh, who says that this looks like Robbie, Dr. Wolf from <laughs> Deep Impact. And so it begins. Wow. People that is intriguing. Hmm. You don't really think that he looks like Do you have an alias? Charles M. Smith. Mm. And You'd have to throw a few years on you, but you know. A few, a few years, hopefully a few pounds. Yeah, a little bit of a likeness going on there, Robbie. Hey. Mm. <laughs> but of course, you're the handsomest. Thanks, Christy. What's the weather? <laughs> I didn't, you guys. I didn't do anything. And so the chat room fills up with weather. Well, let's uh, head on into viewer questions. If you've got some questions for us, live at Category5.tv. And, of course, you can also submit your questions in the chat room, Category5.tv. Yeah, and maybe it'll start raining in Texas, Greg. <laughs> there are a couple of clouds. Do you have some questions there for, for us tonight, or...? Sorry, I switched cameras. Um, I thought she was literally going into a question. Yeah, no, I, no, no, it was, really it, it, was about the it, it was just a comment. Um, it's 23 Celsius in Moline, Illinois. Thanks, Agamotto. And uh, in, in Switzerland at 1 a.m., <coughs> clear starry night. Oh, 284 degrees Kelvin. See, I have, I, I, I actually have a, um, what is it called? You know that. You can't you can't shield perforate of, my shield my right. my yeah my shield of weather. My weather shield. Uh, so, <laughs> and you know what? When I when I was leaving last time, Robbie gave me his his stick. He used to have a stick that he would poke me with if I was doing the weather for too long, and he gave it to me. And it's you know what? It's under my front porch at home, so I can keep doing the weather. So keep sending it in, okay? <laughs> um, can, I'm looking for improvise. more. Looking for more. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I don't see any more for now, so I guess I'll have to go to the mail. Okay, it's your call. That's a good idea. Your call. Um, from Leland. Greetings, Category 5. Hey there. Do you know of any open source search engines? It may be necessary for the Linux community to support their own search engine. I'm huh. noticing more often than not my search results are nearly useless due to advertising. May the open source be with you. Interesting question. I don't know of an existing open source search engine that's there, an operational search engine. Um, a, a, a Cosia or something? There's one search engine that I just kind of happened on oh, by yeah? mistake, and every time you go to it, it saves some rainforest or something. I don't know. Ecosia? E-C-O-S-I-A? The green search? Mm -hmm. That's interesting, mm -hmm. considering we're going to be giving away some green batteries in a little bit. Green batteries? Yes. Do you have to have a green camera to put in green no. batteries? No. Oh. Eco-alkalines. Oh. The carbon neutral, environmentally friendly battery. Uh, of course, you got your uh, your ballots in, uh, so we're going to be giving away a year supply in just uh, about a half hour time, so stick around. Um, Sounds like fun. What comes to mind when I'm thinking about a, an open source search engine is I can't think of one that will allow you to crawl through open source sites, but I can think mm. of uh, something that comes to mind is called Spider. It's mm. just like sp Spider, but with an H. And what this would allow you to do is actually run your very own search engine. It's a PHP tool that you can wow. download and, and get and put on your server. Just a little tiny thing. There it is. I've already got it. So now with this tool, I can install that. And it, it basically places a MySQL database on my server. It uses Ajax for searching. So then I control what sites are indexed by the search engine. So you can oh, go ahead and create that. your own search engine. That's fantastic. It's pretty cool. It can be used for, you know, if you run your own website, you can use it for internal search within your site because uh, you would just tell it to crawl just your website. Hmm. But if you wanted to create an open source search engine, you might add a bunch of open source websites to your index and let it run. Hmm. So every night it will do a cron job that respiders those sites and things like that. Wow. So you could, you could get started I on I love that. If anybody knows of an existing uh, open source search engine, uh, I'd be open to hearing uh, about it, and we'll mention it on the show. So it's Svider.eu. .eu. Hmm. Svider. They have a demo right here. 
just type in test. And there it goes. It's just it just looks like a you know like a Google esque kind of search engine. Yeah. Um, we actually use it on our website. Of course. Well. If you go to search.category5.tv and just type in, you know, Linux, and you'll see that results will come up for every entry of the word Linux within our site. Wow. But it, it, what's neat fantastic. is... That's fantastic. But you'll see that it also, it's searching the wiki. It's searching our main website, right? It's searching the newsroom. And it's giving you re uh, the most relevant results based on our mm. entire network of, uh, of sites. Not on so. who's paid the most to be on the first page. No, <laughs> nothing like that. No ads or anything like that. Mm. But I don't know that of any is great. open source. Yeah. But search.category5.tv is a working model for Spider. And you can get it from spider.eu, and I'll post links in the show notes for episode number 210. Neat. Tonight is our fourth anniversary, if you can believe, and... And uh, people who are wondering, oh, well, what's Christy doing back? I didn't know that she was still co-hosting. <laughs> uh, a little bit of nostalgia and a little bit of uh, reminiscing to have Christy back in the studio. <laughs> uh, because this is uh, indeed our fourth anniversary of the show. Mm. Hard to believe that so much time has gone by that we're now uh, going to be starting season five next week. <laughs> it really very is. Very excited about that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I am very honored to be here. Thank you for it's inviting so nice. me. I'm so glad you were able to be here. So, <laughs> thank you. More mail? More mail. More mail. Okay, let's go to Gadwill. Hi, Gadwill. Hey, Hello to whomever is beside Robbie at the point in time of reading or the overlord himself. Gadwill um, really likes my weather reports, so, <laughs> you know. Um, I think Gadwill is right up there with me with regards to the weather reports. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he, he, he talks about what he has to do five minutes before the show instead of my weather <laughs> um, I was wondering if it's possible to make the background color dollar c o l o r function also transparent. Note to In readers. CSS. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Background ash color. So that's a CSS. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is he asking for? Well, um, my code is, rele my that is code relevant to the question. It's got yeah. a global ID with a background image. Okay. Mm. And scroll down a little ways. And then uh, um, one mm -hmm. of those funny brackets. Sure. <laughs> what are those things called? Uh, the braces. Oh. The squiggly bracket is a brace. A brace. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then ID, middle, middle content. content has a background color of gray. And that's it. Mm. Okay. So what's the question at the bottom there? I would like to make the function of the I identity uh, ID yeah. I ID middle content transparent in CSS if possible. Basically, I want it so that the user can see the background image on a page in full without it having only part of it viewable. Hmm. Hmm. So Gadwill, I'm I'm trying to follow the question, but you're specifying that the background color is gray on middle content. And what that does is that oh, that is going to create a picture that ID is a box, and you're coloring it gray. So now whatever is behind it is going to be masked. What you can do is you can go background colon transparent semicolon, and then your CSS is going to take that middle content and give it a transparent background so that the background shows through. But then you don't have gray, if that makes sense. You can also use transparency um, so that your div is going to be semi-translucent, so that the background shows through ever so slightly. Um, and that you can, you, you know, just a quick search for uh, CSS transparency will probably get you there. Oh, I'm already there. Opacity 0 0.4 works in Firefox. Filter alpha, opacity 40 uh, for Internet Explorer. So if you copied those two lines, that would give you 40% opacity. Opacity 0.4 is 40%, but then the command for IE is 40, so an actual percentage. So you want to match those up. Set it to 0.6 and then 60, and the, it will be a 60% opacity. But the disadvantage to doing that is that it can cause 
um, older browsers, and this is what we run into when we're designing websites, uh, you're always wanting to design it in such a way that it'll work with you know, cross-browser compatibility. It's got to work well on everybody's computer. As soon as you have a lot of transparency, it starts to become choppy as the user scrolls down the page if they're using an older computer or a, a bad video card or something like that. So you want to be a little bit wary of doing too much in that regard. The other option would be to create a gray ping and set the transparency of that ping to 40%. So then instead of specifying your background color as gray, you would specify background image as that gray dot ping, which is at 40% alpha. So then the div is not alpha, the actual background image is. And that would work as well. But again, won't work in older versions of Internet Explorer. And you'll hear me say that a lot. As soon as you get into web design, that's what you're going to hear a lot of. Well, this will work great, but <laughs> not in Internet Explorer. Mm. Everybody yeah. should be running something other than Internet Explorer. That, that's what Gadwill said. He said, mm -hmm. uh, IE is what killed me. And yeah. uh, he said, needless to say, I run a LAMP stack now for web dev at home. Right, so LAMP stack being that it means that he's got his own server, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Mm. Cool stuff. Yeah, mm. sometimes in web development, uh, you get to the point where perfect compatibility from browser to browser is not going to be an option. Internet Explorer, um, Microsoft browsers are the worst. So mm. they'll, you'll tend to, you know, eventually you'll get to the point where, okay, we'll make it look good in all browsers, but it's going to always look better in WebKit and Firefox, mm. plain and simple, mm -hmm. because we've got CSS3, because we've got access to some you know, uh, box shadows and text shadows that IE does not support. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a question from Greg. Hey, Greg. Hi, Robbie. My Android issue is resolved thanks to Gadwheel Yay. and Pyro's Rock in the forums. Awesome, Greg. Well, that's cool. So that, that wasn't a statement. question. That that was a happy person. That's great. Who, who got it help goes to show in the big in the forum. worldwide forum. Mm -hmm. Well, it just goes to show that the community of Category 5 uh, is, is much awesome. bigger than just mm -hmm. the on-air, um, mm -hmm. that you were able to solve your problem without even coming on-air mm -hmm. uh, with that issue. So yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, it really is Good. great. And thank you to those of you who commit time. Uh, we made direct mention to Gadwill and Pyrus mm -hmm. Rock. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking the time for the community and helping people out. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And thanks for providing the forum. There we go. <laughs> Gadwill is uh, very active in the forum and basically mm. keeps that going for me. Mm. Um, is that why he doesn't want to spend time on the weather? Quite possibly. Mm. There could be other uh, ulterior reasons. Mm. Um, but the forum basically is one of those things where I don't have enough time to, uh, in my day, to be maintaining a forum and maintaining a wiki and, and running the show and doing everything that I do. Mm. So uh, thanks to Gadwill. And Gadwill and, and mm. a couple of other and viewers as well yeah. have uh, really taken on those, those projects. And, uh, mm. It means a lot and it uh, helps us to, to grow as a show mm -hmm. uh, and as a community. So Open source Cheers. TV. <laughs> there you go. Use our search engine. That's ah. right. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, we have uh, Alexandra. Wow, hey, Alexandra. haven't haven't uh, heard from you for a long time. Um, and this, I'll just mention this one. We actually read on the show last week, but oh. I wanted to come back to the question. Oh, okay. So we'll we'll kind of skim it. I'll let you. You know what? I'll let you read the question. But just know that we did touch on this last week, but then Gadwill and I were talking in the chat room afterwards, mm. and I realized, oh, there's a better way to do this. Oh, oh awesome. So okay. I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Now, soon. Alexandra does a, a geeky gang sign, so, so I don't know, you know. Geeky gang whatever. sign. That would be whatever. like. Yeah, okay. See, that's better. Yeah. Erase mine and look at his. <laughs> it's got to um, be like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm about to do a dual boot, so, so once again, this, this question was already asked, but uh, a dual boot with Windows 7 and Ubuntu 12.10, waiting for final release on my laptop, and I want to make sure I can easily access my Ubuntu home folder from Windows. Ideally, home folder and my documents would be combined folders that possible. The only way I can think of is putting the home folder on a separate partition so Windows can read it, but I, I know you don't recommend that because it'll shorten the life of my hard drive. And, and Alexander says, see, I've been paying attention. Um, so, <laughs> great master of Ubuntu, <laughs> suggest. That was it. So how do we mm -hmm. do it? Last week I had suggested using FS tab and going through the hoops of doing that. 
And then, like I say, Gadwell was talking to me in the chat room and uh, said, you know, I, was, I think he was having trouble at that point getting FS Tab to, to mount it mm. because it was a, par- a partition rather, or trying to mount the device versus, you know, using UUIDs and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, why don't we just use a SIM link? This would make the best sense. A SIM link. Use a SIM link to mount your Windows hard drives um, documents. See, I would have thought of that. I would have woken up at midnight going, SIM link. Yes. And that's exactly what happened to me. (laughs) And the guys in the back are like, this guy is (laughs) such a nerd. Such a nerd. (laughs) Laying there awake at night going, SIM links. Oh, I Uh, knew it. Yeah. Well, what can, what, um, imagine a scenario, and mm-hmm. this is, I think, what Alexandra was going for, mm-hmm. where you've got Windows and you've got Linux, and you're mm-hmm. dual booting. You probably prefer Linux because it's better, and uh, you probably <laughs> no need prejudice to use, here. No, well, it's safer to use on the internet. You don't have to worry about the viruses and all mm-hmm. the junk that's out there, mm-hmm. um, and so the, you want to be using it for your internet stuff. Mm-hmm. But then you got to go back into Windows if you want to do, you know, maybe you've got some Windows games or whatever it is that's keeping Alexandra doing the dual boot. But what's a pain is, well, I want to be able to open my documents in both Windows and Linux. I don't mm. want to have to copy them to a flash drive because it's the same computer. Right? right, right. So using a sim link, we can now basically tell Linux that, hey, the documents folder is in fact located on the Windows partition. Hmm. And it gives you a, a roundabout way to connect in and, and you, you really wouldn't know the difference. Hmm. So, Alexandra, head on over to the wiki wiki.category5.tv okay over here on search let's do a search for home folder and you see here linking home folders to another drive and Gadwill has been wonderful in putting together this detailed tutorial which it looks like a lot but really, when it's all said and done, creating a sim link to your, to your drive is not, once you understand it, it's not that hard of a, a thing to do. So, if you follow the tutorial, I think that, uh, that you'll do quite well and do mm-hmm. provide your feedback as well. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to be the best way to do it. So, if you want to mm-hmm. be able to do that, access your, you know, if you go into documents on Linux, it's the same folder as the documents, my documents in Windows. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what this is going to accomplish. So, it's... Uh, really cool stuff that is great yeah and thanks again to gadwell and all of yeah. our other contributors uh, in the community uh, who take you know what we say on the air or what's said uh, in the chat room after the show and uh, is able to then compile it into uh, a lesson and a tutorial and of course gadwell took it way further and actually tried this on his own system and That's awesome. through all the steps and hmm. made sure it was working so check it out all right. Can we go to Andy? Sure. Uh, Andy Halen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hey, Andy. Thanks for the great contest. Absolutely love it. Yes, I'm an audiophile and a synthesizer freak. Mm. Tool used for this project. Cubase 6 on a Windows XP. Omnisphere VST synthesizer for the movie Atmosphere. Whoa. Dum, dum, dum. AKG C214 Studio Microphone, Ooh. Yamaha O3D Just Digital Mixing Console. This stuff. This, look at all this. Um, some VST has plugins. Out, I'll, I'll tell you what's happening here. This is one of our viewers who has grabbed a hold of the concept of the stop motion video <laughs> from episode number 207 and is putting something together. And check this out. This is quite the setup. I mean, this. Uh, this is, I, I don't want to scare away other, other viewers who are going to be a part of this competition because this, this, uh, this dude's obviously got the rig. There's our stop motion video up there, you can see. <laughs> and, oh my, Omnisphere, this is going to be good. Wow. Sony Vegas Pro, Windows Whoa. for Video Production. Wow. FFM Peg Ubuntu to convert your <laughs> AVI to an MPG She's that fast. Cubase Sony Vegas could read. Miro Ubuntu to watch the podcast. There you go. <laughs> well, hey, you're using open source to watch the show. Wait, we, 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 weren't we going to have a battle here? I was looking forward to Well, you'll have to tune into episode battle. 207 to oh. catch the real battle. Mm. And, uh, and you can download that episode 
And uh, there is a clip that you're going to be able to I add your own it. voiceover to. Hmm. Add your own voiceover to. And, uh, so watch it. Yeah. And we're going to be giving away a ton of viewer points and a pogo plug. So make sure you uh, check that out. That's on episode number 207. Thanks for your questions, everybody. Live at category5.tv is uh, where you want to email your questions to. Quite the setup indeed, D-Man A-10. Mm-hmm. Are you set with the news? It oh, is that yeah. time, half past, just mm-hmm. about. Take it away. All right. From the Category 5 TV newsroom, hackers may have had a four-day head start when they broke into government systems in January in an attack that continues to leave many employees without full internet access and revealed flaws in the security of federal computers. Documents obtained by the Canadian press say the Treasury Board and Finance Departments were notified of harmful activity on January 24th by the agency that oversees communications security in Canada. The department whose networks are linked began to remove infected computers and institute a series of rolling internet outages to get to the root of the attack. Eight months later, many government employees affected in the attack are still working with limited internet access. After the initial shutdown, government employees were allowed access to internal sites, but in order to see external sites, they had to submit specific requests for approval. In order to keep the government moving, internet kiosks with full access were set up and they remain in place. We're still following procedures to protect the integrity of the system, said Jack Aubrey, a finance spokesman. A spokeswoman for the Treasury Board said the department has taken the necessary measures to ensure that employees have access to the information and tools needed to meet business requirements. She declined to comment further. In the latest news from the tech world's ongoing global hunt to find someone to sue over deal on with with patents, Microsoft has signed a licensing agreement with Casio. The broad multi-year contract, which neither party will put a price to, will help protect Casio devices that use Linux. While Linux is supposed to be open source, Microsoft has claimed since 2007 that more than 235 of its patents are violated by the project. In the last four years, the software giant has been quietly threatening legal action for any Linux-using company that refuses to sign patent deals with it. Amazon, Novell, Linspire, Turbo Linux, and Xandros have all put their X on the dotted line. Others, like Satnav maker TomTom, ended up in court but eventually settled. Microsoft has also used the Linux-related patents, among others, to target Google's Android, already succeeding in getting HTC, Acer, ViewSonic, and a couple small hardware manufacturers into licensing agreements. Google Plus is being opened up for anyone to join after two and a half months in closed testing. The search firm's latest foray into social networking was initially offered to journalists and people working in technology-related fields. However, members' ability to invite friends meant its user base quickly grew to tens of millions. Google Plus has been praised for several innovative features, including its multi-person Hangouts video chat. The prospect of social search through Google would appeal to businesses, according to social networking specialist Matt Rhodes from Fresh Networks. Brands know that a lot of people who come to them through search and anything they can do make themselves come up through the right terms or higher up the rankings is important. Commercially, that's the opportunity, he said. If you're logged into Google and search for supermarkets, if some of my friends have plus one to Tesco or commented about it, that might push Tesco above Sainsbury's in my search results, unquote. The rise of Google Plus has not gone unnoticed by its competitors. Facebook has recently rolled out a number of innovations which many observers have characterized as a direct response to the Google challenge, although the company argues that these have been in the pipeline for far longer. Vic Gandatra, Google's senior vice president of social business, told the BBC that he welcomed the competition. NASA's best guess is that its six-ton UARS satellite plunged to Earth over the Pacific Ocean off the U.S. West Coast between Friday night and Saturday morning. Isn't it reassuring that they don't really know? 
if their projected times are correct, any debris that survived to the surface probably went into water and not on land. The Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite, UARS, is the largest American space agency satellite to return uncontrolled into the atmosphere in about 30 years. There were some unconfirmed reports of glowing wreckage moving across the sky in western Canada, but NASA said it had yet to receive credible evidence that this is so, less still that any debris items had been found. Nick Johnson, NASA's chief scientist for orbital debris, says because we don't know where the re-entry point actually was, we don't know where the debris field might be. If the re-entry point was at the time that JSPOC has its best guess of 416 gross mean time, then all that debris wound up in the Pacific Ocean. A previously unknown painting by Francesco de Goya has been found hidden underneath one of his masterpieces, the Rijk Museum in Amsterdam has announced. The unfinished work was discovered underneath Goya's portrait of Don Raymond Satu in using a new x-ray technique. It's thought to depict a French general and may even portray Napoleon Bonaparte's brother Joseph. Bombarding a piece of art with powerful x-rays causes atoms in the picture's layers of paint to emit fluorescent x-rays of their own, which indicate the chemicals they originated from. That enables a color map of the hidden picture to be produced. The technique developed by the University of Antwerp and Delft University of Technology was successfully tried out on a Van Gogh painting two years ago, revealing a portrait of a peasant woman behind the work Patch of Grass from eight 1987. Microsoft cheered Windows users earlier this month when it demonstrated the upcoming Windows 8 operating system booting in 8 seconds. Part of the technology behind the fast boots, however, could enable Microsoft and its PC vendor partners to block users from loading Linux on a Windows 8 PC. Matthew Garrett, a mobile Linux developer at Red Hat, wrote in a September 20th blog post. To gain Windows 8 certification, PCs will be required to use the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI, in revision 2.3.1 or later. This firmware includes a secure boot mode intended to block malware such as rootkit infections. When this mode is turned on, the only bootloaders that will run are those whose signatures match those stored in a database within the firmware, according to Microsoft. Garrett charged that this mechanism could not only keep users from installing alternative operating systems such as Linux, but also preventing them from using hardware, a new graphics card, for example, that didn't come with appropriately signed drivers. He further complained that there's no central signing authority for the keys employed in UEFI Secure Boot, effectively giving each PC vendor control over what software its products can load. Potentially good news for Linux users, however, as Microsoft Program Manager Tony Mangefest responds by saying, at the end of the day, the customer is in control of their PC. The security that UEFI has to offer with secure boots means that most customers will have their systems protected against boot loader attacks. For the enthusiast who wants to run older operating systems, the option is there to allow you to make that decision. Get the full stories at Category5.tv Newsroom. The Category5.tv Newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv Newsroom, I'm Christy Burton. Christy, thank you so much. I found it funny that uh, Microsoft's quote was that you can still install older operating systems if you so choose. Oh, like yes. As if they're, it's like a slight towards alternative operating systems, like as if they're obsolete or something. Mm -hmm, but we know better. We know better. We know better. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogoplug at cat5.tv slash Pogoplug and Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. I promised that uh, I would take a look at a tool that is available for you absolutely free that uh, will let you use a GUI in Linux to detect lots of the hardware that you have in your computer. If you head on over to Synaptic Package Manager, System Administration, Synaptic Package Manager on your Linux system. I'm going to bring that up now.
quite often I hear, you know, the question, well, what, what software should I use in the terminal uh, in order to get access to what hardware is, uh, is running in my system. And here's a great little tool. It's called LSHW, which you probably already have, but we're going to go dash GTK for the version that works in the GUI. Now, I've already installed this just for the sake of the demonstration. Now, once it's installed, so you click on that and uh, install, and then go apply. Once it's installed, hit Alt F2 to run an application, and go GK sudo LS hw dash gtk and hit enter enter your administrator password and now here's a great tool that's going to allow you to not only see your hardware but your firmware versions that you have in your bios of your computer once it detects here you'll see it's just scanning my system gives you lots of great information if i double click on my computer my motherboard now there's my bios with the bios version some of the capabilities of my BIOS, what's enabled. You can look at your CPU. Now if I double click, because it's bold, I can actually see more details, even further into the, uh, the branch there. If I, for example, click on system memory, I can see that I've got four gigs of system memory. If I double click on it, I can look at each individual DIMM and find out more information about what it is that I have running in that system. So check that out. It's LSHW-GTK. It is the GTK front end for LSHW, which you probably already have installed. But you can get the GTK version in Synaptic Package Manager just like that. LSHW-GTK. Very happy tonight to have um, good friend Lionel Lalonde. How are you? Very good, Robbie. Thanks good. for having me. Yeah, from ecoalkalines.com. And uh, great to have you here. And uh, there we go. Now you got micage. Oh. <laughs> like to talk a little bit about eco alkalines. And of course, tonight's a, an exciting night because we've been taking ballots over the past two months, um, letting people uh, get on to uh, cat5.tv slash free batteries, uh, in which case they've entered ballots by following you on Twitter, liking you on Facebook, or retweeting one of your tweets as well. And so we've seen uh, a number of people who have participated in that contest, and we're going to be giving away a year supply of EcoAlkalines batteries um, today. But one of the things that I'd like to know, and, and the viewers are probably curious, is what actually makes an EcoAlkaline battery eco-friendly? What makes our battery a, a eco battery, a green battery, is that it's, it's landfill safe, it's earth friendly. It has no harmful chemicals, no cadmium, lead, or mercury, zero trace amounts. Uh, the batteries actually have a patent pending leak resistant seal, so they will not leak. Uh, the batteries also um, mm. are the world's first carbon neutral battery. And what does that mean? It means that uh, they've been certified by carbonfund.org. Uh, uh, they did a full uh, life cycle analysis on the batteries to determine uh, its carbon footprint. Uh, we found that the uh, manufacturing process was 88% efficient, and they were mating 12%. Um, we, you know, support some uh, carbon credits that actually go to uh, some projects right here in, uh, actually in North America. We're doing reforestation in mm -hmm. areas hit by Katrina. We're doing uh, truck stop electrification and biofuels research. Fantastic. So, uh, and and being that you were already efficient at the manufacturing level, it's uh, that's pretty surprising, really. I think of batteries as being kind of a dirty, um, quite potentially anyways, uh, kind of a dirty operation as far as the chemicals that go into them. And Most of the factories that exist today um, have been, factories have been around for you know many, many years. Our mm -hmm. factory is fairly new. Right. Um, so we were able More to, right there. in the startup, uh, we were able to put in the efficiencies up front. So yeah. Fantastic. that's uh, what made it more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, now I use, uh, I, well I have been using, uh, um, nickel metal hydrides. Uh, prior to that, I was using rechargeable alkalines and, uh, and some other just rechargeable batteries because to me, that was my way of being more environmentally friendly because we use microphones here that require AA batteries, for example, 9-volt batteries. So it makes sense to me that a 9-volt nickel metal hydride would be better for the environment than buying a whole bunch of alkaline batteries, for example, that are disposable. Well, the 
the uh, rechargeable batteries have been the the greener choice for most retailers. Um, most retailers have uh, put those out, and basically, you know, during the life cycle of a rechargeable battery, um, it could take up to most standard batteries t- today can recharge up to a thousand times. Right. Um, and basically, the you know that's the same carbon inf- uh, footprint uh, of about 200 disposable alkaline batteries. But the real problem is is the um, disposable of those or just dis- how the um, customers dispose of those batteries. Mm. Uh, we know today just from our statistics in the U.S. that only three percent of the people actually properly recycle batteries. Most of those batteries are winding up in the landfill and actually are about a thousand times more harmful to the environment than uh, uh, than a regular alkaline battery. Right. Wow. So really it boils down to how is it treated at the end of life for that yeah. battery? I mean, a lot of these batteries, basically rechargeable batteries, will have, uh, will have one or more of the uh, harmful chemicals in a very high percentage. Right. And that's what's required to operate. And, yeah, and I, I, I know, <coughs> like, we tend to think that a battery is, you know, it's a little tiny thing. You, well, what, is, what does it do to, to chuck it in the garbage? Yeah. And, with something like a nickel metal hydride, that would be, from what you're saying, is, is quite harmful. It is. And, and a lot of people, I mean, it, it's it, it's a lot of work to put the batteries in a box and, and take to a recycled for, um, depot, whether it be the fire department or, or store that uh, support that. I mean, it mm-hmm. uh, it is, uh, it's arduous and it takes time. And a lot of people in their fast-paced uh, lives right now don't want to take that time. Yeah. Our batteries, I mean, we certainly recommend that they recycle them. Uh, they are 98% recyclable. Okay. Um, yeah. But, I mean, if thrown in the landfill, um, that you know, people under- will know that they are degradable. They will break down in our lifetime. That's They'll fantastic. go back to yeah. the earth element. See, that, that, that's good to know because I kind of wondered about that <coughs> landfill safe statement because I'm still recycling my eco-alkalines batteries at the e-waste recycler because to me it's it is you know they're going to be able to recycle the metals and things yes so interesting to note that well in fact it just means that they will break down and they won't leak harmful chemicals that is correct understood okay very cool uh how how well now i know the answer to this but for the benefit of the viewers uh, now i found that the batteries are fantastic they're really good solid batteries they last um even longer i've found in, in all honesty and just in my own usage they've lasted longer than traditional alkaline batteries that I've purchased. Um, as far as comparatively to other alkaline batteries, to other available options, certainly my nickel metal hydrides, how does uh, eco-alkaline measure up to that? Well, to the, the um, they'll outperform the heavy duty, the nickel, um, nickel metal hydrides. The they'll outperform. Outperform, they'll long last or well, they'll last, last longer. longer. Something like that, yep. <laughs> the um, the in regards to the major brand batteries, uh, we've had our batteries tested, and uh, they're equivalent. Uh, they're not the best yet. We're still working on that. Right. But um, you know they're better than the uh, the one major brand and a little bit less uh, than the other brand. And you know based on the amperage draw, the continuous amperage draw was about 20 minutes difference in uh, one of the major brands and 10 minute better oh, wow. than the other brand. So and that's over a fairly long time. Yes. So it's that's pretty minimal. Wow, very good. Uh, so do we have to pay a lot for eco-friendliness? I, I find, you know, I, I've started investing in eco-friendly light bulbs, and I'm paying a premium for that. I really am. Like LED light bulbs, I paid $19 for a single light bulb. No. With our, with our batteries, I mean, we've done, uh, you know, batteries are, manu- the manufacturing process is not that expensive. Um, you know, right. we uh, haven't charged a premium for a green product uh, like you see in detergents and mm-hmm. in uh, LED light bulbs. Uh, we basically, our batteries on average are anywhere from 399 to 499 for a um, a four pack of batteries, depending on the right. retailer it's, uh, it's selling at. So it's the same price as pretty much any other battery that's yep. on the shelf. Fantastic. We can be green and uh, not even have to pay more. Yes. Very good. Uh, where can you buy them? That brings me to that point. Like, where are they available at this point? At this point, um, our company is fairly new. We're a Canadian company. Uh, we've been around since uh, we purchased the company back in November. Um, we in Canada, we are uh, we have distributed to a number of uh, major retailers, uh, selected home hardware stores, PharmaSafe Pl- Pharma Plus stores. Right. Uh, we just uh, recently are in the process of launching Home Outfitters uh, online. They're available at um, Costco.ca, Walmart.ca, and uh, Future Shop and Best Buy.ca. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have selected bundles in the U.S. 
Um, we're in the process of uh, launching Whole Foods. Uh, we're also in the process of launching um, Granger. Uh, it's in container stores, selected colleges and universities. So we're going to start to really see these batteries, yes. uh, eco-alkalines, available okay. at many major retailers. In the U.K., uh, mm-hmm. we have distributors set up in the U.K., and Mexico, and Australia. Oh, that's good. Excellent. And uh, we're going to be a little bit of a distributor tonight as we send off a year's supply of, uh, of Eco Alkalines batteries to one of our lucky viewers uh, who has participated in that contest. Um, and we are open to sending those out anywhere in the world. Absolutely. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's grab the... Uh, well, I brought my ballot hat today. Oh, you got, oh, what do you got? Well, you know, my oh, secure... Well, we anything like that. We're, we're technologically savvy here. No, no, this is secure. This is the way to do it. You know, kind of create the anticipation, get people all excited, get the draw on the head. The the faux drum roll? Kind of of like that. But this could be rigged. No, not at all. No, no. Lionel Lalonde. No, 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 no. That that must be a misprint. Lionel Lalonde. Hold on. Okay. What is this? Nothing. Hold on. Maybe we should try your way then. Okay. Don't know how that happened. We'll use, yeah, this. That wasn't fixed. Don't you get free batteries as it is? (laughs) <laughs> so let's see this uh, wonderful okay, so program. Okay, so Drawbot is, is going to go out onto the internet, grab all those tweets, grab all those retweets, and grab all those Facebook likes, and we're going to find out now who is going to be our winner. So get ready. Gear Supply of eco Lines Batteries is about to be awarded. We're going to cycle through the names. Every single name that uh, Drawbot has picked up from Twitter, uh, from Facebook, is now working its way through. Olson, Olson Oaks, Hyrus Rock, Jonathan Olson. Lots of names that we recognize. As you see your name, shout it out in the chat room. Sean Dwyer, Tyler Cameron, Garby. Working our way through a ton of names here. This is for a year supply of Eco Alkalines batteries. Now, Lionel, how, how does a year supply work? Basically, what we've uh, put together in the contest is that it's, it's equivalent to one pack of batteries, your choice, per week, um, for the next 52 weeks. So we can choose 9 volts or yep. double A's or triple A's. We'll contact you uh, tomorrow and we'll get the details of where to send it to. By the way, congratulations on your fourth anniversary. Thank you very much. Then uh, it would have all been your name. T. Oh, Steingart right. from Barry. Now, I saw Tordo again, and, and you'll see that uh, a couple of people have shown up a couple times, and that means that they've qualified by casting a ballot in, one of, in more than one of the three ways. So the chance is that the, the best they can do is to have three ballots in, which is to follow at EcoAlkalines on Twitter to retweet the special tweet, or also to like them on Facebook. You get the links at cat5.tv slash eco. That's going to take you straight over to ecoalkalines.com and give you all the information about what it is that they do and how they do it differently. Oh, here we go. It's starting to speed up. You can tell Drawbot is uh, running low on names. We're just about to the winner. Tasking. Congratulations to Congratulations. Mutant Tasking. And uh, Eco Alkalines will be in touch with you uh, on Twitter uh, to find out your particulars so that they can send you out those, uh, those batteries, find out what kind of batteries you would like. And uh, also what I'll get you to do is send us an email live at category5.tv. Oh, that's not Christy Van Noort. <laughs> <laughs> She's over there laughing away. <laughs> Email <laughs> mutant tasking 
uh, email live at category5.tv with your email address and phone number just in case we're unable to get a hold of you on Twitter. Uh, and that will just be a fail safe, and I'll pass it along to uh, to our friends at Eco Alkalines. Lionel, thank you very much for thank being you. here with us tonight, and uh, thank you for your sponsorship of Category Five. Uh, if you don't know, Eco Alkalines are the official battery of Category Five Technology TV. As I said, I find them to be uh, long lasting and, and exceptionally good batteries. Um, so it's a, it's a privilege to have you uh, on the show and to have your product as a part of our uh, our broadcast as thank well. Thank you very much, and I want to thank everyone out there who uh, who. Uh, w- followed us on Facebook and followed our tweets and uh, participated in the uh, contest. Thank you very much. And it's not too late, even though uh, we're not, you know, that, that has been awarded. If you're interested in the product, do uh, find out more at cat5.tv slash eco. That's E-C-O. And that will uh, let you find out more about Eco Alkaline's batteries. But make sure you follow them on Twitter and also like them on Facebook. Thanks again for being here. So one of the things I do notice that from watching your show and watching mm-hmm. a couple of why you're so focused on this great this this is funny with all the, the people, people chat, chatting live yeah the <laughs> chat room just flying by for those of you who watch now i get RSS why you keep after. looking that way right why i'm never making <laughs> yeah. eye contact with you yeah or i talking. try i try anyway thanks again thanks for having me cheers nice to have you here thanks this is category 5 technology tv you'll find us online www.category5.tv we've got a couple moments left christy's going to rejoin us and we're going to take a quick look at pixlr which is a free online image editor, if you can believe. It's fantastic. And we're going to actually be able to use our web browser to do photo editing. And I'm not even talking about basic, you know, horrific. You, th- you think about online photo editing, I think, what is it? It's going to be like my, uh, Microsoft Paint or something, like really, really rudimentary, Pokey, really yeah. basic. Yeah. Let's bring up, I'm going to bring up my web browser here. And here, Christy, I'm going to go P-I-X-L-R dot com. And when I get there, I'm going to click on Open Photo Editor. And boom! I didn't have to install a thing. Wow, that's I'm on amazing. Linux. You could be on Mac or, or Windows or whatever. I'm going to create a new image. What size do you want it to be? I'll just do 800 by 600 default. Okay. Now I've got my canvas. It looks just like a Photoshop application or the GIMP or any, you know, a good looking drawing application. Without getting too far into the feature set of Pixlr, what I'll do is I'll just show you, you know, how, you know, it can create Starfleet emblems. <laughs> but you notice what happens here is it actually adds the shading in all by I itself. I love it. And lets me actually kind of look like. It's a pretty lousy Starfleet emblem, but that's kind of my DS9. That's what it's supposed to look like, Christy. That's what it's supposed to look like. I knew that. Yeah. Just so you know. I watched episode 539. And then we can save it to our computer. It's got full photo editing. I mean, you can go through the whole gamut of tools. It's a layered photo editing tool. I love this. It's available directly on... Your browser. I, I have to say, I've been I've been looking for something Isn't like this. I, I seriously have this been looking like for something like this. This is like Web like 2.0, taking us one step further and saying, okay, now it's blurring the line between application and internet, and that's right. where the internet is going and has been going for some time. Mm. I'm going to blur that f- fine line even further, and I'm going to go into Synaptic Package Manager, and I'm going to. What a great episode Linux. for me to sit in on. This is fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to type in the word prism. And let's see if, uh, well, hopefully I have that in my repositories. It doesn't look like I do. This is, I'm using, right now I am on uh, Zorin OS. I'm going to actually look for prism or Linux. You probably will have Prism in your Synaptic Package Manager. I'm a little surprised that I don't have it in my in Synaptic. But what Prism does is it, like I say, it further blurs the, the line between web and application because what it does is it lets you create an application launcher for a website and then it will load Pixlr. 
right? <laughs> as an application. So now you've got something on your start menu or your applications menu, on your desktop, on Linux or Windows, on your, on your dock bar, on Mac. And using Prism, it looks exactly like an application. It operates exactly like an application. You never had to install anything. It's not taking up any space on your hard drive. And it's super fast because you're not relying on your computer anymore. So you could have an old computer. It doesn't matter because Whoa. it's actually running. The, the processing is happening on the server. And their <laughs> server, of course, is going to be high-end good stuff. I, I love this. I'm so happy. <laughs> I have to go home now. <laughs> go give it a try. I know. I, I, seriously, the last two days I've been messing around with pictures and trying with different programs. And, and yeah? I, really ha yeah, I really have to try this. It's really quite quite cool mm. there it is I mean that's what I really quickly just zipped up but you <laughs> can you can open images from your own computer you can open images from the web you can save them like I say to your computer you can save them as their proprietary layered format and see it's it works much like see I got layers over here right it works just like your your Photoshop or GIMP there's wow. my layers panel and <laughs> everything is drag and drop just like you would expect but it's a web-based application. Remember, I'm looking at this here in Chrome. Wow. It's beautiful. So I encourage you to check that out. Oh, I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> it's really, really cool stuff. That's pixlr.com. They do offer some other stuff there. I just wanted to really quickly jump into that hmm. uh, because we are pretty much out of time for the evening. But they Aww. also have... Well, they also have... You can choose here, Retro Vintage Effects, wow. where you can actually apply cool vintage photo effects to your own photos. So if you want to get that old, you know, <laughs> vignettes to your photos and give it that colorization of an old camera, hmm. it's just really, really easy. Like sepia tones and things like yeah, that? Yeah, all that kind hmm. of stuff. Is It is sepia then. We had the conversation last week on the show. Is it sepia or sepia? Sepia. Sepia. Yeah. All right. It sounds kind of like C-3PO. <laughs> I don't know what your bent is. <laughs> yeah. Pixlr is available for you free. Uh, you don't have to sign up or log in or anything. Just go over to pixlr.com mm. in any web browser on any platform, and you'll be able to edit your photos directly there online. And uh, check that out. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, it's been fun. Category 5 is online at cat5.tv. Full form is category5.tv if you want to check us out. Mm -hmm. Um Speaking of you know free services, our show is available to you absolutely free, and um, I'd encourage you to go there and, and register. And all the for advice the show. is free, and yeah. and the weather is free. It doesn't happen often, but you know it's it how, was nice, was nice and warm here? here. By the way, it was really on the way it's here. Been weird, hasn't it? it yeah, I am wearing shorts. It, it, they they keep saying that it's 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 going to be a rainy day, and and then you get a few sprinkles, and it's gorgeous again. It yeah. was it was like summer again. Today. I had Eric Kidd over for a barbecue two, three weeks ago, it was freezing. We were uh. like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> and then just this past weekend, I had a barbecue just on my own. Mm. And it was like, I was in a t-shirt and shorts and it was it was hot. So in other words, don't invite Eric to a barbecue? Do you think it was him? It was bad luck? You think so? Just saying, okay. you know. Makes sense. Uh, I understand. No other co-host but me, you know. <laughs> As you know, on the show, uh, we have uh, encountered some uh, lag issues over the past several weeks, and that is largely, you know, there were some problems with Justin.tv. We've had some issues, uh, but we've been in touch with our internet service providers. They are going to be installing fiber optic lines uh, to mm -hmm. the studio uh, this week. So starting with season five, uh, we are going to be broadcasting over fiber. Uh, that's going to mm -hmm. open us up to uh, a large uh, amount of better quality. Uh, we're looking forward to what that can mean. That would be awesome. I don't want to make any commitments because I don't really know, but there is potential for um, some HD streaming and uh, mm -hmm. and much better quality as far as the video goes as well. So mm. looking very much forward to that. Go and along also with us. Nipping in the bud uh, the the issues that we've had with Justin TV. So mm. being able to open back up with Ustream and things like that. Mm. Also this coming Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern time, make sure you visit our website category 5tv We are going to be doing the live unboxing and building of the new broadcast server, which is going in place for Tuesday's show, which launches episode uh, one of season five. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting. Uh, Hillary's going to be here. And this Saturday, again, we're going to be building, <laughs> pardon me, building that system uh, right here live. Uh, you'll be able to watch that, uh, get your questions in, and, and discuss as we're building that. Uh, Neat. Yeah, kind of mm. learn right from the get-go what it is to build uh, a computer system. 
Uh, we're going to be building an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, wow. It's going to be going into a Thermaltake Level 10 chassis from Thermaltake. U- blah. Thermaltake USA <laughs> dot com. Make sure you check them out. Check out the Level 10. That's the chassis we're going to be building this Saturday starting at 9 a.m. Mm. Right here, Category 5.tv. Hmm. Great having you here. Oh, it's so great yeah. to be here. Nice to see uh, Lionel and John. Mm-hmm. John, it's been a while. Nice to see you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, nice to see you, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's great having you back. It, it's always Aww. a pleasure to have you here in the studio. So Thank you. And, well, it's, uh, it's great for me to be here. And it, it's changed a lot since the last time you were here. You mm-hmm. were saying as you came in, wow, it's like, look at this place. Mm-hmm. Um, and with season five, we're going to be making some further changes to the studio and mm. really looking forward. Can't to, wait. Yeah, looking mm. forward to season five, especially. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to have a lot of cool stuff mm-hmm. going on here in the studio at Category 5. So. Nice being back in the chat room and yeah. getting weather reports from everybody <laughs> and, and, and other, other less important things. <laughs> less important things than weather. <laughs> Could there be anything? <laughs> <laughs> I want my little battle. All right. Take care. We'll be hanging out in the chat room for a few minutes at Category5.tv. We'll see you next Tuesday. Good night. Good morning. All over the globe, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. <laughs>